Hi, everybody, everyone. <laughs> I'm mix mixing up everybody and everyone. Anyway, welcome to our talk on scaling new heights with the Ansible community in 2023. We are Don Arrow, who is off camera right now, but he'll be coming, coming on shortly. And I'm Carol Chen. And I think we, next time we team up, we'll say Nero and Carol. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So um, instead of a self-introduction, which actually I did in my talk yesterday, so if you didn't see that, please uh, watch the recording. Um, I thought I would do a group introduction because we are really uh, working as a team, uh, Ansible community team, to enable and help and support the Ansible community. So as you see here, um, these are listed in alphabetical order, not in any kind of preference. Um, this is only half the team, so the other half is here. So you might have seen some of us during DEF CONF at the booth, in some talks, uh, in the hallways, and I hope you had the chance to talk to us. If not, um, take a look at some of these matrix IDs and uh, GitHub handles and uh, ping us online at, at your um, convenience. Uh, we're gonna share these slides after the, after the talk. We'll upload them so you can get this information. Um, if you can see, you know, like we are quite a diverse team. And uh, I actually just came from a talk by Gemma Adriaga about DEI. It's a really great talk. So again, if, if, please watch it if you get a chance. And she talked about, you know, having a team that's diverse and in terms of demographics, expertise, uh, location, status, and so on. And I think our team has a lot of that. And of course, it's not just check boxes to tick to say, oh, we have diversity and so on. We have people from a a Asia, Pacific, and Europe, and US. But it's also having a diverse team helps to serve the, the diverse and small community that we have. So um, one of the main goals that we have is to really kind of make sure that we are being inclusive with the Ansible community, because Ansible community is very varied, not just in terms of the different parts of the project, but also the people's different background and location and um, experiences and so on and so forth. So hopefully, as a um, pretty diverse team, we are able to also achieve that goal of being able to support different challenges that you may have, um, be able to just kind of bring everybody together and hope, hopefully make everyone feel included. Speaking of this, um, being uh, some of the things that we've been doing this year in 2023 and making a great strides in. Uh, yesterday we covered a little bit about, um, uh, the, the, the talk yesterday is how to contribute to the Ansible community and I mentioned about the new website, the new forum. Part of it, we are also um, hoping to get a better sense and under, uh, understanding of what you think about the Ansible community. Ansible, community, like Ansible project has been around for more than 10 years. A lot has changed, it has grown in many ways. So, you know, uh, we've had different mission statements uh, through the years, so, but we would like to something that will be able to kind of um, combine everybody's thoughts and ideas and feelings together. So, if you get a chance, um, take the survey, you can scan the QR code or get the link. And again, like I said, I'll share these slides so uh, you can check the survey out later on. Um, tell us what, is Ansible mean, what does Ansible mean to you and what does Ansible community mean to you? Automation is kind of central, but what else um, do you think? Is it about the people? Is it about the different projects? We'd just like to hear from you. So please take the survey. I already mentioned uh, about the website, and actually Don will also talk a bit about you know, the whole journey thing in, in his part of the talk. Uh, but I just wanted to share some URLs. It's a web, uh, work in progress, and there's a repo you can check out. We are using Nicola as the static site generator, and we are working with the community. It's a you know, com com completely community um, effort and public and you can join the working group on Matrix. Um, we have been working uh, asynchronous, asynchronously, oops. So um, instead of a weekly meeting, we just have the discussions in the working group on Matrix. And as for the forum, um, we have been running an internal test instance since the beginning of the year, I think. 
yeah, so you know, we wanted to make sure that uh, it, it, is, it will do what we planned uh, to have it for. And we, th we think that, at least for me, it has helped me a lot in you know, working together with my team. So we hope that this will extend to the whole community and be a, a strong uh, tool for the community to feel as um, uh, together and, and come together and collaborate together. And everybody's, um, you know, ho ho hopefully we'll be able to welcome you soon to the forum at, at this um, URL. Speaking of events, I just wanted to touch on that we recently have a community day uh, in Boston as part of Red Hat Summit and Ansible Fest. But um, we do want to, you know, again, be more um, accessible. So we will have, since community day happened in US in the first half of the year, we'll have one in Europe in the second half. Uh, stay tuned for details. Similarly, for Contributor Summit, which is more contributor focused, um, we had one in Belgium in February, and we'll probably have one in the in, in U.S. in the second half of the year. And especially for the Contributor Summit, because we have contributors from all over the world, and we, we know that a lot of times people can't attend events in person for various reasons, so we'll make sure that the hybrid option is uh, available and um, accessible to everyone to participate from online from anywhere. The time difference, it will be a, you know, difficult to adjust. We can't have one time that works for everyone, but hopefully we'll be able to still reduce the, um, the, the uh, sorry, in, increase the sales accessibility by providing also recordings after the event. Um, meetups are, kind of more focused regional um, events, more like local city and um, regions. So if you're interested in organizing meetups, come talk to me. Uh, uh, Anwesha, my colleague, uh, she's not here uh, right now, but she's also working on this uh, organizer's toolkit, which helps people get started to organize a meetup, especially if you don't have much experience. Otherwise, you can also help to share your experience and expertise to the toolkit to help us uh, organize meetups from around the world. And this list is just um, the, the meetups in June, some that just has already happened and some are upcoming. So, you know, it's getting active again after the pandemic times, and uh, we love to see more meetups happening around the world. So how, how do you stay on top of all this news, what's happening, you know, the website, the meetup, uh, and what's going on? Please subscribe to the Bullhorn newsletter if you haven't already. So again, QR code you can scan of the, or the bit.ly um, short link. And the newsletter is not just something that you consume and read and get information from, but also you can contribute. If you have something you're working on that you think the, the community can, can benefit from, uh, like a lot of collections are community supported and, and maintained. Uh, every time they have updates, they will um, share the news on the bullhorn. If you have a blog post um, or a video or something that you created and you want to share that, we're happy to have your contributions. So again, there's a new spot on the um, Matrix channel, uh, in the social channel, where you can mention the new spot and then you can get your uh, news item um, saved for publication in the next issue. And it's a weekly issue, so I'm supposed to do, do the weekly issue yesterday, but I think I'll do it um, tonight or tomorrow. <laughs> uh, lastly, this is my last slide. Um, we have, uh, we've been we're, uh, using Matrix for the past two years now, um, but I, I think a lot of people are still kind of uh, starting to get used to Matrix. Uh, it's okay because uh, if you're used to using IRC, you are bridged to that. But if you are new to Matrix, uh, we recommend using Element as the client. And there's information on the um, communications page. Uh, you're pro some of you watching, perhaps, you're already you know, on Matrix because you're watching that through the Dev Conf Matrix, Matrix space. So you, know, uh, you can use the same uh, login. You, you don't need a, a separate one for Ansible. You can join our uh, space, Ansible space and connect to the Ansible rooms on, on that, uh, in that space. 
Uh, Mastodon is um, another social network that have, we have started to be more uh, active in. So if you use Mastodon, um, again, it's not tied to one uh, server or one instance. Um, whichever instance you're using, uh, you can connect to us and follow us. And we can, uh, you know, um, we happen to be on the Fostodon instance. And uh, you can follow us there and we can share information on Mastodon. And with that, we'll, I'll hand it over to Don, who will give you more interesting talk <laughs> for, the, for the rest of the, uh, on um, personal-based content journey. Yes. yes. Okay, thanks, Carol. Um, is Mike okay? Everything good to go? So, as um, Carol said, my name's Don. Hey everybody, I'm part of the uh, Ansible community team, and today we're going to talk about, um, quickly, some of the work that we've been doing to um, strengthen the community, really, and support the users and um, make things better, because um, that's something we've identified a real need for. Um, also, we'll touch briefly on um, the central web presence that we're building. So to dive right into my slides, um, I want to start by disambiguating. You probably hear me say the word docsite like 20 times. So it's a good idea to say specifically what that means. Um, the docsite, when I say it's going to just be a set of bunch of HTML files that um, are statically generated, and it's kind of a top level um, landing page for the Ansible community docs. And that's the doc site. And here we are. This is um, a snapshot a little over a year ago, but it's about the time that I started with Ansible. Um, I'm still quite new. And I'm learning stuff all the time about Ansible. Um, but when I started, this was my entry point, like most community users. Um, I went right in. Let's go with the docs. Um, help me understand what Ansible is. I've talked to a few people at DevConf um, over the past couple of days that they're like, hey, what is Ansible? And it seems to be a common question. But when I got into the doc site, it was, you know, there, there was a real mix of things. It was hard to find the answers. Um, and I was looking for a, um, for a quick start, for a hello world. I came over from um, middleware where I've spent most of my career and like working with like different JBoss teams. And I always look for like that hello world, you know, get in, get started, like few easy steps. I want to get up and running and doing something, you know. Let, let's go. But when I was looking at for looking for something similar for Ansible, I got in this like weird loop. You know, I just had the question like, how do I automate something with Ansible? How does this work? Show me, you know. And I found a page in the community docs that took me to like a Red Hat site where there's a video that didn't load, and. It, there was a link then that took me back to the community docs where I had already been. And it's just like in this weird loop. And I spent like 10 minutes just like, what even is this? You know, like, what am I doing? Um, so that was just this barrier for entry. You know, a lot of people are just like, okay, I can figure it out. I'm just going to give up and like maybe go to Reddit or, you know, who knows. Um, Another thing that I noticed while like navigating through all of the community docs and trying to like, you know, I knew there was a lot to Ansible, and I was like trying to like navigate through all the different projects and like looking at their documentation. There was this lack of cohesion. You know, like Markdown docs that were just in GitHub over here. There was stuff on like Net Netlify over there. There were, like a bunch of stuff on Read the Docs, but they were all in like different namespaces. So I didn't know what was officially an Ansible project. You know, I also found like while I was doing this, there were like these third-party mirrors of the entire community docs. So there was a lack of trust. I didn't know where I was. I didn't know is this like an official Ansible thing, or is it just like a project out there that somebody's doing? And you know, there was things were just like spread all over the place, and yeah, you know, different looks and feel, completely inconsistent. Um, so why does that matter? You know, why does, why does documentation, why is that important? Why should we do anything about that? Like, why should the community team even care, you know? Um, 
community documentation. Um, kind of reading the slide to you here, but um, you know, it, it enables users to succeed, right? Like when, like I think, like for an open source project, like Ansible, like what made Ansible really successful is great documentation. You know, like when I started, like you know, I was writing a playbook to do something, and I, you know, once you can find your way into, like, you get to the documentation. The underlying documentation is great, you know, and everything was there. All my questions were answered. When you do go to, you know, places like Reddit and you see people have questions, you often see like the responses in the comments. There's a link to the docs. So once you know where you are and you're in. You know, it's great, and like that success increases adoption, and you know, that expands the project, and you know, you get adjacent to like all these different things, and you know, it's 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 a real vital um, part of any project. So documentation absolutely matters um, as a force multiplier. So fixing all of these things, where do we start? You know, like where was, where was kind of the point that like, okay, we've identified like these kind of problems, like how do we go about fixing them? So um, I think we all are pretty familiar with the idea of personas and you know, it's kind of a UI UX thing and like some of them can be a little, Oh, have, almost have like too much detail, you know? This is like George and, you know, he's a Sagittarius and his favorite color is brown and like all this kind of crazy detail. But the thing that really matters with personas, um, you know, they, you identify the, the user, the people who are, it's your audience. Um, and the thing to kind of hone in on are the needs, the attitude, and the knowledge. I think those are the things with personas that really matter. Hey, there's Anresha. So, um, you know, the needs for a persona are important because that, you know, that, that kind of explains the goals, right? You know, like what the user is trying to do. And you want to help the user succeed, so you need to understand, you know, what do they need from this? And the attitude is important because the attitude kind of gives you the level of verbosity. Like say it's a, you know, a developer and you know, you're coding against an API or something. You want to know all the programmatic options and their expected behavior so you can play around and tweak and tune and see what works and what doesn't. But if you're an SRE, you don't want to be playing around. You know, if there's like a flashing red light on a dashboard somewhere and the service is down, show me how to remediate that as quickly as possible so I can restore things and we're back to being fully operational. Knowledge, I guess that's kind of an obvious one. You know, that, that if, if it's a hobbyist, someone who's like maybe automating, you know, every time they like install like an Ubuntu distro, you know, and just you got a playbook for that or, you know, whatever you're doing. Um, that would be a very different set of, like, knowledge to, say, like, a solutions architect who, you know, goes into enterprise. So, you know, knowing the needs, the attitude, and the knowledge um, of the different personas really helps you um, understand your users and the different types. So you got to bear with me. I'm kind of the king of protracted pauses. And it's Sunday. It's also Father's Day. i got to talk to my kids later on. And there's a weird phone call. So I'm a little bit like, uh, but it's OK. Let's go. It's, it's, it's good stuff. So again, like um, once we had those user jar, the, the personas in place, we were kind of like, so what do we do with that? You know, that's, that, that, that's great. But how do we? Um, how do we map out like the you know what the user is trying to do and like you know so again like coming from from, from middleware I was you know I've been working on like this operator and for Kubernetes and that's when I became that's why I learned about th these these milestones this is actually the the kind of the base Kubernetes journey you know when you become aware of something maybe you read about it or you're just curious and then you evaluate and you start to learn and then you adopt and you know you're using it then you scale up and out um, so I think this the, these kind of milestones that's pretty much applicable for most IT projects right it's a very generic one um, so you know 
we needed kind of a framework to you know, have that progression, the evolution of the adoption of an IT project. So you know, using those milestones. Um, so once we had those two things together, like we, you know, we'll have these milestones. Each one starts with some kind of human motivation, and then you know, you describe that, and then like there are the specific um, tasks underneath that you need to complete that milestone um, along your, you know, and they're the milestones along your journeys. So we started mapping these things out, interviewing people, talking to the community, um, you know, identifying what these are, and. Um, we, you know, we needed a way to, the idea is like, you know, meet the community where they work. I think that's something that is one of the, actually, before she left, Robin kind of imparted that bit of knowledge. I was like, yeah, that's, that's a great thing. You know, don't, don't, don't put the, like we started like, you know, while I was talking to people, we started putting things in um, like this browser-based tool and had like these really fancy, really beautiful kind of like graphical representations of, you know, the user journeys and like, oh, there's this task and they go on to do, and it's kind of like a tree thing, you know? Um, it looked great, but you couldn't check it in the GitHub. You needed to log in and you had to like register and there was a limit of, you know, it was a free tier that, so it just didn't work. You couldn't give it to the community, you know, you didn't want it to be behind um, a login. So we turned to, you know, Markdown because it's ubiquitous and then, you know, putting things in YAML and then, you know, in, in, in GitHub. So, you know, plain text, of course, makes it easy to, you know, do PRs and all that good stuff. Um, so we started mapping out persona journeys, um, making things available to community by putting them in, in the repo. You know, everyone works in GitHub, so we created a repo. As I think we all know, naming is one of the hardest things in tech, and I still kind of hate the name of this repo, and I think that's okay. It's gonna, but you know, we, we um, so I, you know, created a, um, a really simple like bunch of Jinja templates and you know some some some, some styles and you know we, um, deploy things onto GitHub pages and there's an action so people could look at it and we could start getting things out to the community and they could see what we were building. Um, and that's when things started to get really fun. You know, I think like when you talk about personas and journeys to the community, sometimes they don't really get quite that engaged. They're kind of, okay, that's, that, that's great, but you know, maybe it's a little bit abstract or something, you know? I just, but when you show them something <laughs> and it's like, hey, we're thinking about this new doc site, look at this, then the feedback starts rolling in, you know? And we went a little bold at first, you know? And we put out the, um, you know, we decided to be, hey, let's, let, let's really mi mix things up. How you doing? And um, the feedback, at first, you know, it ranged from like, oh, this is great, you know, we can like change these things and we can actually like build this new doc site. And then like some other people like, yeah, no, nah, that looks awful. You know, and we, we went through a few iterations, but you know, as we found like Cunningham's Law was kind of our, our thing. And so let, let's not try and get it right from the beginning. Let's just get it out there. Let's be bold and let's, let's, get, the, let's get the community, get their hands on it. And as we went, you know, we, we gathered feedback through the bullhorn, um, you know, sending shouts out, like we hit Matrix, um, IRC, we even like went to the folks on Reddit and just asked them, hey, what do you think? You know, we're working on this new doc site. And the feedback started getting, you know, um, we, we, we got a lot of great things from the community that we didn't think of. And they're like, oh, you know, be, you know, we need a links to this. And, you know, that doesn't make sense. And, you know, um, so, Feedback started to roll in, and eventually it started to get a lot more positive. And when we got away from those boxes, and people stopped paying attention so much to the colors that we were using and the look and feel, and things started to come together. And I think people actually started like noticing those journeys. And like, oh hey, you're actually telling me this is the complete step. This is the progression for like, you know, I'm a maintainer, and here's the path that I can follow. And that's, that's literally what we were doing. You know, like the guys in the airport with the glowing sticks are like, yeah, this way on the runway. We're literally signaling to users, um, this is the path you should follow. So 
we got to, um, if you go to docs.ansible.com, you'll see this. And you know, we've got um, a journey-based doc site. And again, the whole idea is like, here are these paths. Like these are the ta if you're if 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 you're you know you want to get started you can do these things if you know you're a user you know you start here and then you 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 build and you know we've kind of defined those journeys and of course it's it's still a work in progress and we're continuing continuing to try and get feedback measuring with analytics we've got a quick links you know there's a there's a toggle so you can like flip between the old site that was there with the cards, if you still want to do that. But we've also been able to see how many of the users that go to docs.ansible are, are, are doing that. Um, some of the things that are to come, it's using the diataxis framework, which divides content types. And like there's tutorials, concepts, reference, and then like how-to guides, where like tutorials you know, it's task-based stuff that helps you acquire skills. Well, how-tos are larger, kind of more overarching um, sets of procedures that help you apply the skills that you've learned. Um, also, we're working on revamping. One of, the, one of my first contributions to Ansible was the getting started, and we're working on revamping this so it can lead to different places and build out and make that path a lot easier. Also, with the ecosystem, um, we've moved everything under um, the same Ansible namespace. All the projects that are on Read the Docs, we've moved stuff that was over on Netlify, of Galaxy and G. They're now in the same namespace, so everything's kind of organized, and you've got that trust. And there's you know the deterministic URLs, and everything's kind of in the one place. Um, we're also working on themes. Um, there's MK Docs for projects that want to use Markdown. Great, use the MK Docs theme. That's brought to us by um, Soren, um, who's on the DevTools team, has been working on that one. There's also a Sphinx theme, and we're building a community website as well that will tie into all of this. And um, here's here's a um, screen grab of that. That you know, there's still um, a lot more work to come on that, but that's going to give that central place um, where the community can come and you know find the docs and then you know find the forum that like um, Carol was talking about in her segment. And um, so there'll be that as well. And finally, I'll leave you with the um, call to, if you want to get involved with this, one of the best places um, to do that would be on Matrix in the docs channel. There's a, uh, we call it the dogs. It's a documentation working group. It meets every Tuesday. Um, everyone's welcome. And if you're, if you're curious to know more about this, if you, you know, want to contribute or find out more, please come and join us. We're a friendly bunch. Um, love to hear feedback, love to hear criticisms, um, and just, you know, come join us. Thank you. How are we for time? <laughs> Do we have no questions from the chat? You guys want to hear me talk for five minutes to... <laughs> I'm sure I could, oh, it is Father's Day, so maybe I got a dad joke in there somewhere, yeah. Yeah, it's, I've, I'm on the spot, though, and my mind's just going blank, so I would, yeah, and I don't want to be recorded. Yeah, please. Yeah. Uh, the question, do you want to translate this kind of philosophy to the way of patient health and dogs in the world? Because in a nutshell, all the dogs which the past users could use are probably the dogs possible to go. They used to be at some point, no doubt, because of the built in modules. But now with everything coming to collection and inherently visible in the dogs of patient health, I 
well, I know like we're working on, oh, yeah, okay, sorry, yeah. Um, so let me make sure I got the question right. Like your, your, the documentation that's on Automation Hub or Galaxy is not also on docs.ansible or? Yeah. Do you wanna? I. I, I think the the docs docs.com is only community, mainly community docs. Yeah. So the automation hub stuff. Will... Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so. So the docs.ansible.com has uh, mainly community docs, so the automation hub stuff will probably won't be there. You have to anyway log in separately to the automation hub and access those uh, certified um, collections and things like that. And even on Galaxy, I think the, the community Galaxy, the uh, docs also are also rendered on the website, yeah. as, as far as I know. But there are links from the doc site to Galaxy, but no, are there like collection docs? Are, are they rendered to docsignsable.com? I'm not sure. They, so they are. So that the package docs are. So uh, should we like show them or something? Let's let's see if I can. It's a good question anyway. If you've got us a little bit stumped <laughs> with the answer, but well, yeah. Here we go. Yeah, I think those Galaxy user guides are a little bit so, stale. Yeah. Yeah, what's 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 the source? Of, yeah, I I do think they're both pulled from the same source. Any other questions out there? No more questions. Okay, well, thank you, yeah, thank you very much. <laughs>